Okay, so, so far I have built up my digital painting from references, right? I put a toned background down. I have my sketch layer, which is now locked, which is just solid pixels. Kind of soft, smudgy, kind of finger painted color, blocking it in. I'm doing kind of a mix of these two poses, stealing colors from both, finding my own version, my own painted style of Godzilla here. And now I'm doing the refined paint layer. And the refined paint layer, I, using a smaller brush, I'm customizing the brush a little bit more. I'll get more into that. And then I'm actually establishing a palette of colors I, I'll want to mix between, even adding in some colors that aren't from the reference, like the orange here. And you can go really out there with color. So you combine them and it starts to starts to take form, right? And we're just going to build in as many layers as you want. I'm going to try to keep it pretty minimal to keep the memory load down. But we're starting to build our own paint style. Each layer is a different brush? Uh, for me, each layer is going to be, yeah, probably a different brush and a different opacity, a different way of using the brush. All building on top of the solid base layer. Okay, so I'm in this refined paint layer. I could keep using this brush, which I customized using the brush settings here. Right. But if we actually look at the brush presets, we have options beyond just the ones that are already built into Photopea. If we click on this drop down, you'll see that we can actually define a new brush or we can load ones that we have found, right? Because you can find brushes online, they're called ABR files. You can load them, we can make our own brushes and we can export them as ABRs. So how do we create a brush? So I'm going to create a new photo P file. I'm gonna make it 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. It's the same way I do it in Photoshop. Doesn't matter the resolution because I'm defining the pixels with a white background. I'm going to use solid black as my paint color. And then using whatever brush I want, on a 40 feet, 5 degree angle, I'm going to create kind of a, a messy, handmade, scumbled pattern. I can vary the size. You see how some of these edges are softer, some of them are harder. The only reason to make your own brush is to make it very customized, right? I can erase away. break up the brush. You can see how already this doesn't look very digital because I'm using these brushes that aren't the defaults, right? And you can see that mix of hard and soft edges to them. Especially when I play with some of these settings. And when I design a brush, I like to leave like a little bit of fragments at the edge, like little trails, little broken spots. And I often do that from erasing out. Want it a little bit sharper. Let's, see, let's try this one. 
Nope, not that one. <laughs> All right, so this is kind of an interesting brush. One last little bit. Okay, so now to define this brush, I'm gonna to go to those brush presets, I'm gonna click on that triangle, I'm gonna say define new. And now that brush is added to the bottom. Oops, supposed to be. Of our brush options. Let's see, where is it? Oh, it does not look right. So let me see. Maybe I have to do this. To export as an ABR. Hmm. Or well, maybe how do you clear the canvas again? You said Citro Alt and X. Yeah. Well, you just do select all, and then delete. Right. So it might be that I can't define this as an actual brush. because I don't see where I can define. Oh, here we go. There it is. So under edit. So it is more like Photoshop than I thought. It's just slightly different. So under edit, I've made my brush pattern a thousand by a thousand pixels. Then I go under edit, define new brush. Okay, now the brush is added. And you can see it's a thousand pixels. It's at the very bottom. And yeah, so now I'm getting it a little bit more. Okay, so now if I want to clear it, I can select all, delete, and now let me adjust this brush. So as a thousand is as big as it can get, it won't let me adjust the hardness because there's already hards and softs in it. But if I use that brush without any modifications, it looks like that, right? So let's play with its brush settings. First thing I want to do is play with the tip dynamics. I want to mess with its size quite a bit so that now when I use it, it jitters in its size. I want to mess with its angle quite a bit so it's not always at the same angle. So that looks like it's always at the same angle, but you see how it moves around. So now it's at a different angle. No, it's still at the same angle, but when it paints, it moves. Just when I do one click, it's always going to be locked into that one angle. I can play with the roundness, which smooths out the edges. And without a tablet, it doesn't really matter if I have a minimal diameter. Okay, So those are the tip dynamics. I can play with scattering it just slightly, like maybe to a count of two. So it covers a little bit more ground sometimes, but I jitter between that. So again, let me select all, delete it. So you can see as I'm customizing this brush, how it's giving me a lot more space. I'm going to narrow its position a little bit just so it's not quite so sloppy. All right. And then color dynamics is a little bit trickier. And it's how much you want it to kind of mix with a background color. So if I have black and white chosen, I can choose it to mix and blend between the foreground and background color. This is good for finishing. It can be really annoying um, as you're just building up a speed painting because it means you have to choose colors for both the foreground and background all the time. So for now, I'm going to turn that off. But that might be fun to play with at the end. Okay, now I can take that brush. and apply it, use it, in my digital painting for my refined painting layer. 
and I'm going to use that brush preset, but then set the tip dynamics. Because otherwise it's going to have to be reset every time I change to it from a different file or from a different brush. Set the angle, set the roundness, right? set the scatter. How do you save a brush and import it again? So once once you draw it, uh oh, let's see if it's gonna catch up with me. Once you draw it, you go up to edit. Yeah. And then define new, and then brush, and it will put it into your brush presets. Okay, so now I've defined my brush, but I don't want it to be a thousand pixels. I want it to be closer to the size I want, which is going to be more like 200 pixels. And I want it with these dynamics, right? So when I use it, it works like this. Maybe even a little bit smaller. Let's do more like 100 pixels. And then I think this is where the define your brush option here matters. So if I say define new, now it's added to my brush presets at 85 pixels. And it should now have all of those shape dynamics, position dynamics already set into it. So now I can always get back exactly to this brush. So that's how you fully customize your brush. So now using that, I'm on my refined paint layer. I'm going to take my opacity down. I can still, of course, adjust the brush. It's just whenever I click back on that, it will go back to those presets. And I can start painting with it. And that way I'm not limited to just what is built in already to photo P. So that's very helpful. And then at this point, there's just a lot of kind of effort and a lot of building and painting and layering up. So it's easiest to see kind of in the eyes, whoops. I want to set up so I have as much space as possible. Ah. So I'm going to shrink my tools a little bit. Then get back to my actual painting. And then hit Command O to fit it all on the screen, right? And maybe get a little bit more space. I think I'm going to crop this down. Give myself still room to grow but I don't need all that extra space on the bottom. Okay, so now I'm gonna use that brush. I can go to my brush presets, scroll down to that, and have a good tool ready to go. And now the main thing I'm gonna change are just the color that I'm using and the opacity. And I'm gonna build up this refined paint layer getting more of this texture, more of this form on this Godzilla. Now I'm using this kind of varied um, frenetic brush because Godzilla has all this kind of scaly texture and a lot of interesting colors and things going on that I want to exaggerate in my painting. But if you're trying to do kind of a portrait of really smooth skin with no blemishes, then you might want a softer edged brush. And you'll use kind of low opacities to build up those seamless transitions. So it just depends on how you paint and what you're